Alexis Standridge Ball Biddies. Ball Biddies by Alexis Standridge. Linda, woman, 70s, energetic, <laughs> fumbling with romance. Georgina, woman, late teens, proud, wants to prove something. Harry, woman, 70s, Loud, funny, bombastic, very butch. <laughs> Fran, woman, 70s, high femme, a flirt who has a temper. Yes. Tiff, woman, 70s, tired of all the drama and her many ailments. <laughs> Betty, 70s, bitter, silently frustrated with her mental issues. Betty Ann. Woman, 70s, caring, a grouch, worried about bed. <laughs> Chris, man, 40s, very tired umpire, exhausted by group shenanigans. <laughs> a baseball dugout at a public park. The dugout isn't so much a dugout as it is a dusty old bench with a cheap overhang. Charming, old, and well used. Linda and Georgina approach the bench, hauling softball gear. Linda is dressed in a group t-shirt made through a cheap website. It reads, Ball Bitches. <laughs> are you guys the home team? Today we are. Yeah, over here. There you go. The stuff's heavy. What? Oh yeah, catcher's gear, honey. I thought you played second base. I do, but Fran's car isn't big enough for her gear. She's got a little beep beep. I've got a boom boom lesbian car. <laughs> that your paper, all right? Lesbian car. It's a specific thing. I know what it is. What is uh, it? Like a Jeep or a truck. No, a Subaru, right? <laughs> because I've been reading about the late '90s Mariah Nash Subaru campaign, where they started an ad campaign for lesbians. Look me in the eyes, Jordan. <laughs> but I want to put this stuff down. Just, just do it. Come on. Okay. Never date a dyke in a Jeep. <laughs> What's wrong with Jeeps? Nothing until you end up in the back of one. On your back. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to... No, no, it was funny. That was funny. Yeah, well, now that you're one of us, I figured you could joke with us. You know, I always knew you were gay. Oh, yeah? Yeah, of course I did. Since you were eight and had that princess party, <laughs> you could just tell. Look like the butchest little girl in a princess dress. <laughs> Linda finishes up setting up the gear. Georgina takes out her phone and begins making a blog post. April 4th, 2021. I'm going to be hanging out with my lesbian godmother and her friends as they do the gayest thing I've ever seen. Play softball. <laughs> Wouldn't Sappho be proud? It's nice here. Smells like mowed grass and ointment cream. <laughs> and cologne. I watch my godmother dab it behind her ears like my mom does with perfume. It's been nice seeing her since I came out of the closet. Now that we have this thing in common, we can actually talk to each other. A moment where they look at each other. Nothing comes. Terribly awkward. Both look away. Uh, even, our, even our silences are meaningful, full of a mutual unspoken understanding of what it means to be queer. Here, grab this for me. She tosses Georgina a catcher's bag. Georgina struggles with the gear. God, your parents should have gotten you into sports. What is this? You can barely walk. I'm fine. You're struggling. Here, let me take that. She easily lifts the gear, holding it aloft. Look at that. 67. Still good. That's what happens when you major in talking. Communication studies. Talking. <laughs> A pause. Linda is frozen, holding the bag up. Do you need help? Just push it my left side real quick. Oh. Georgina does. The bag comes down. There we go. What did you major in? Oh, something dumb. I spent most of my college ditching classes and going to a gay lounge trying to pick up girls. Gay lounge? Oh, yeah. It was just an old room in the back of a bookstore collective. A friend of mine had claimed for an unofficial official gay league. He posts all these serious discussions. You know what? You should ask Harry when she gets here. She, she paid more attention to that stuff than I did. She claimed her way of getting ladies was debating them about gay marriage or political lesbians or whatever the hell. Did that work? I'll tell you this, she got so many notches on her bedpost it turned into a toothpick. You got her. <laughs> yeah, when I was like 12. And that's great because now you're older and you're gay and we can get to know each other. You can hang out with your cool godmother and all her gay friends. And you can talk about studying how people talked. 
communicate. And you can finally meet my family outside of my family. And they can meet you? Yes. Right. Yes, and you can um, write your paper. I mean, to be honest, it would be better for the paper if it wasn't all lesbians. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll only be getting one perspective of the queer community and history. Well, I'm pretty sure we're not all going to have the same perspective. I just mean in terms of, um, back in the, back in the days, I guess. Okay, well first off, Harry does not refer to herself as strictly a lesbian. She's dated all around the gender pool, dived in hip first. Oh, so she's bisexual. Well, I don't know what she calls her. You should ask her. Yes, I'll do that. Takes out her notebook and writes down. Six lesbians and one bisexual. <laughs> Honestly, that's way better. Right, well, I'm really hoping this would be good for your paper, but also good for us, you know? Good for me and you. We'll be, we'll be able to get to know each other. And now that you're in the city, you can be a real baby dyke. Right, uh, baby, yeah. Do you know what I mean to call you that? Because once the team knows, that's all they're going to be calling you. No, 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 I'm okay. I, uh, I should be used to it. You don't have to get used to something you're not comfortable. I'm fine. I'm just, I'm nervous. I have a ton of things I want to ask questions about, but um, I guess I have to, like, swerve it towards more lesbian things. What, what's more lesbian things? <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of questions, and I don't think all of them are going to be the best for this group. Like, I can't dive in there with stuff about, like, leather daddy culture. Oh, <laughs> you'd be surprised. <laughs> what questions are you going to ask? I guess, like, I mean, mostly around the Blood Sisters drives. And act up involvement. Ah, uh, 80s. Well, I mean, most of us were more involved in the 70s. Yes. I know Betty did some stuff with, like, feminist movements, but I don't want anything to be just about, you know, look, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not... It's hard. It's hard for me to talk about things. And I'm glad, too. I'm glad that we're going to connect, and I'm glad we're going to learn. I had so many questions for you. I was afraid to ask because I didn't want anyone to know about me yet. And so now I'm going to. I get to ask the questions. And um, I'm, yeah, I'm here in the city with this history. And I've already learned so much. But now with this paper, I can really, yeah, I can get to know my community, the queer community. Right? Yes. They smile at each other, both intensely uncomfortable. I'm never here first. Quick, put my bat over there. Go on, quick. Is that your spot? It is now. Batter number one, first come, first in the lineup. Got to stick to the old ladies. Here, little <laughs> lady. Oh yeah, this old lady's gonna whoop some ass today. Just wait. Oh, look, look, look. By the playground. It's Harry. Here, watch, watch this. If it isn't horn dog here. Oh my God. <laughs> Ran out of husbands and wives to steal the old slut. People are looking. What? It's true. She's done that. Hey, slut! Please. Ha! She looked. Can we not? <laughs> Over here, horn dog! <laughs> she approaches the dugout, hair slicked back under a baseball cap, looking very butch. She also wears the team t shirt. She throws down her gear and gives Linda a hug. Second teammate arrives at the park. Harry, she has a stately feel about her that's entrenched in a deep culture of butchness. But she's bi. Or she's bi, but looks butch. She was the first butch I ever met. I was eight years old, and my godmother brought her to Thanksgiving. And it was the first time I understood that women could look like that. Could smell like worn leather and musk. <laughs> hair gel and a comb. Legs like hairy trunks. Dyke, dyke, dyke. <laughs> God, you're an asshole. You know? Some mom was looking at me like I was going to eat her kids. <laughs> Did you get her number? I could have. I could. <laughs> Georgina, long time no see. Hi, Harry. I heard you just got back from Italy. How was it? Hot. Beautiful. Gained 15 pounds. Look at you. You look nothing like your aunt did at your age. You're a little cutie. I was cute? <laughs> you to know. You were way too horny to be cute. Hey. <laughs> Your aunt tells me you got into SF State, so you'll be around. Yeah. She also tells me you're a fresh baby dyke. Oh, um, <laughs> kinda. But, um, I was wondering if I could ask you and your team some questions. You're staying for the game? Yeah. Ah, oh, alright then. Yeah, yeah, sure, I'll answer some questions. Great. 
I have this paper for my journalism class. You have a paper? Mm -hmm. God, do you remember having a paper, Lynn? No. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> My aunt mentioned you had a gay lounge when you were in college. Could you tell me about that? The lounge, hmm. I don't know if I have anything interesting to say. You need to talk to one of those ball buster bold ice. I was just a slut. Uh, what's your paper about? Uh, spaces for gay older people. Essentially, like, you know how a lot of queer spaces are geared young? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean clubs, bar stuff. It's a younger crowd. And I wanted to look into some older spaces. And I remember my aunt has this softball team with you. Is she calling us old? Oh, I just mean, <laughs> I, I, no, I'm giving you a hard time, Georgie. Don't worry. OK, right. So if you had to name a fundamental difference between the gay generation that's young and the gay generation that's old, what would it be? One thing. Yes, like gender politics. I was under the impression that we invented gender politics. I mean, well, not me. Was it you, Lynn? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Judith Butler got that whole thing from me. <laughs> so, no difference? One group's old, one group's young, and everyone's dumb. Right. You know, um, I think I actually uh, had a list of questions already written back in the car, so I'll just go get those. Georgina hurries off. Interesting kid. Yep. Bringing her is your way of pussing out of that bet. I'm counting it as a forfeit. Shh! What? No one's here. I brought Georgina here to help with her paper. All right. Don't mention the bet around her. Okay, if I'm doing that, I may as well take your money right now. That affects nothing. I'm still gonna do it. Sure you are. You brought your wallet. Shut up. Put on your brace. Harry takes out a back brace and puts it on. Ugh. Two months. End of the two months. Look, I know you've been out of practice, but geez, Lynn. I couldn't exactly flirt with Fran last game. Divorce anniversaries. Don't strike the romantic mood. Which divorce? The third. Oh, Rosie. Rosie. All I'm hearing is there was an opening for you to be Fran's big, strong butch, and you let it pass by. Yeah. Remember the wedding? I remember they served champagne, and they kept serving it. And do you remember what happened before you glued your ass to the bar? Well, when you decided to reprise your role as the group Lush, Fran was telling Rosie some homemade vows. And she mentioned she'd like that Rosie first asked her out. She felt like a real lady. Right, I'm supposed to copy Rosie. You're supposed to do something and not boot over her and miss pop fly every time she bends over. That was one time and I wasn't even looking. Oh, come on, your drool <laughs> was leaking over the third base. <laughs> right. You just want me to get laid so I get better at softball. Well, I'm not making it a fifth loss today, so either you ask Fran out or give me a hundred bucks to smooth the blow. What's it with you and Winnie? What is it with last year's at the softball? Come on, do you got any sunscreen? Yeah. Linda and Harry start smothering on sunscreen. Harry pulls a muscle. <laughs> God, shit! What? What's wrong? Oh, my shoulder blades. God damn it, they sit down. This is why we stretch, we eat. Oh, no, this has <laughs> nothing to do with stretching. This has everything to do with everything breaking down. My back, my knees, my shoulders. And you know, other things don't work like they used to. I do not want to hear about your cooch. I'm not talking about your <laughs> cooch. Okay, yeah, my, my cooch, too. But my tits. I watch it, public park. Linda takes out a bottle of water. I can't feel anything in this tin anymore. Quiet. Really? <laughs> you could flick it, and I wouldn't even flinch. Okay, <laughs> try. Dad, no. Come on, just flick it real quick. No. Fran enters. Hair nicely set, makeup and nails done perfectly, very femme. She watches unnoticed. It won't hurt. I don't care. Seriously, it's like a button. Come on, just try I it. I am not flicking your nipple. <laughs> Is that a new come on? <coughs> <laughs> Linda chokes on her drink. Fran, glad you could make it. Aren't we glad, Lynn? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I'm fine. <laughs> she coughs uncontrollably. <coughs> drink some water. <coughs> no, no, she just needs to stand up. Here, here. She hauls Linda to her feet. Linda coughs harder. <coughs> Tiff enters with her gear in a cooler, dressed comfortably. Linda coughs and wheezes throughout the following. Hey, heard from the bed. He's there. They're on their way. Hey, Tiff. 
Fran, how the hell are you going to play ball in those nails? I was thinking the same thing. Hey, hey, Tiff. I'll be fine. They're short. I, I wanted to get something nice. That something nice is going to cost us a couple of runs. You old dykes can mind your business. We're beating the poppies. Us old dykes aren't beating shit when our catcher is all thumbed out. You can't powder your nose when you steal a face. And when you start crying about dirt in your hair gel, we can talk about being fend out. <coughs> right? He's an idiot. Fine, choked. They were talking about nipples, and I scared her. Ooh, whose nipples? Mine, but only this one. I can't feel a thing on my mind. Go ahead and flick it. Tip flicks it. Christ, yeah, it's like a button, huh? <laughs> See, Lynn, if you flip a nip, you wouldn't be dying right now, for God's sake. She slaps Linda on the back, instantly stopping the coughing. See, that's the kind of thing you check with the doctor about. Mm. No, just went down the wrong pipe. Nipples, not Fran making you jump. That's normal. <laughs> <laughs> My makeup that bad? Oh, I, I was just... Actually, yes. Your mascara is going to start running around the third inning. Oh, shut up. I buy the good stuff. Look at this. She takes Linda's drink and pours a bit on her face. The mascara doesn't run. <laughs> See? Can't say the same about that hair gel. Uncle Ed, I can't get the trunk open. What? Your trunk, it's stuck. She's not stuck. She's just bitchy. One second. You want excuse me, bitties? Oh, is that your niece? Can I meet her? Oh, yes. Right. Yeah, come on. Come with me. She, She'd love to. Fran exits. Smooth. <laughs> Linda worries after Fran. Tiff starts setting up her gear. Throughout this, Tiff puts on a back brace, some knee braces, and some wrist braces. Can't say the same about your hair, Joe. I mean, who shows up to a ball game wearing lipstick? A lady? Oh, please, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I never got that whole lipstick lesbian thing. I mean, it really defeats the purpose. Of being a dyke? Yeah. I wasn't aware there was a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, being against the patriarchal, hetero culture, you know, that whole thing. So how does your sleeping with men factor into that? <laughs> My sleeping with men is the gayest thing I've ever done. I mean, look at me. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you're jealous. A man? You mean Fran? God, no. If you ever see me dolled up like that, it's going to be the coroner's fault. Not her looks. I'm talking about Linda liking her looks. Are you trying to say something? Nothing I don't know, Ruby. No? <laughs> well, I don't know what you're talking about. Terry, come on. It's getting a little silly. I feel like I'm 19 dealing with all your romantic drama. Romantic drama? Are you kidding? Just saying. No. I know you're kidding. Or you're an idiot. All right. Tiff opens the cooler and pulls out two beers. I am the one trying to get Linda to make a move before we all die, so I don't know what you're trying to say. I'm not saying anything. I said all right, we can let it go. We will let it go, because it's nothing. Linda and I are friends. Our friends have been friends. Nothing else. <laughs> Tiff hands her a beer. What's this crap? It's better for your heart. My sister got some for me. Look at the label. Harry holds it very far from her face. Jesus, Harry. What? <laughs> Nothing. You just as old as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Did Lynn tell you she was bringing her knees? No. Well, Fran looked like she knew. Is it a problem, her niece being here? My sister was here last week. She's writing a paper about old queers. Huh. And we're supposed to answer questions. Is she family? Yeah, fresh. Okay, so she's young and curious. You remember being young and curious? Uh -huh. Yeah, I was curious about people my own age. And I was lucky enough to have them get curious about me. Hey, do you remember that librarian at that anarchist bookstore that collected by Amelia's? <laughs> no. She had the... God spare me. Fran laughs from off. Harry quickly swivels to look. You're going to break your damn neck. <laughs> Georgina's saying something. With any luck, Fran will be talking to her the whole time, and he'll leave the rest of us to actually play a game. Why get all pissy about it? 
Aren't we supposed to care about the younger generation? Have you been around the younger generation? Because I have. And every time I run into a new 20-something, they start asking me all these questions, and I'm supposed to play their mentor. And I'm like, hun, I still haven't got my life figured out. Or worse, they start lecturing me. Oh, stop it. You don't think that. Yes, I do. Well, I don't. I have too much faith in you. I, I like being around it. Keeps me up to date with the terms. Yeah, but how do you get the feeling that they're staying up to date with ours? What? Do you honestly feel like they know their history? The ones I know do. This little group that comes to a writer's meeting in my, by my place, it's, it's nice. They feel happy seeing me. I feel happy seeing them. Dumb questions and all. Yeah, I just don't like being told things. You don't like anybody telling you anything. Come off it. Let me ask you this. Do you think someone asking a bunch of questions about the past is going to be good for Betty? I don't know, and neither do you. Well, I know that when anyone tries to get her to remember something, she throws a fit. Don't we rip Betty into this? What she is going through has nothing to do with your love triangle BS. <laughs> <laughs> me trying to get Linda laid does not put me into a love triangle. <laughs> and Betty doesn't need you to defend her. Honestly, I'm surprised she's even coming. Why wouldn't she? Well, I don't know. I mean, she was really bitching through the game last night. So you don't want Georgina here. You don't want Betty here. You don't want Fran here. All I want is for everyone to just get along and stop messing up the game. Shut up. I just want one game. Shut up. Time. Betty's here. Betty approaches the field. She's curled in on herself. She looks a bit confused, perhaps a bit angry. Her steps are close together. She looks as though someone else dressed her today. Tiff and Harry watch her. She's fine. They watch. Betty doesn't seem to see them. Betty? Betty spies them. Absolute change in demeanor. Coming out of the fog. Have you two seen Anne? No, she didn't drive you? She did. She just wandered off somewhere looking for my medication. I'm going to go find her. D do you need help? No, I got it. Who's the kid? Georgina, uh, Linda's niece. Oh, a moment where Betty almost disappears again. Betty? Huh? Could you help me put this on my neck? Tiff produces an ointment lube, too. Betty comes back. That looks disgusting. She opens the <laughs> ointment. Ooh, that's a smell. It's for joint pain. It's foul. You should smell the stuff on my knees. <laughs> as, as Betty puts the cream on Tiff's neck, Tiff takes out some prescription pills and pops two of them. What else you got in there, Mary Poppins? <laughs> I want to pass out before the second inning. Hey, you got anything fun? Here, yeah, try these. <laughs> <laughs> she hands Harry some pills. <laughs> Betty Ann enters in a rush, hauling several bags. She's dressed in a lot of khaki. All right, I got the sunscreen, I got the bug spray, I got the cooling pads and the heat pads. I got the seat cushions, the water bottles, band-aids. Shoe gels. And the gloves? What gloves? Gloves for softball. Uh, oh, no, no, uh, 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 one second. She <laughs> rushes off. <laughs> you think she's the one with the dementia? <laughs> um, are you going to be good to play? Yeah, if you feel like letting me. <laughs> like anyone could ever stop you from doing anything, Becky. Fran, Georgina, and Linda approach the dugout. All right. Everybody, I want you to meet my goddaughter, Georgina. She's the smart one in the family. Mm -hmm. First year at San Francisco State, and we're all very proud of her. Don't scare her. Hi. Uh, congrats on the college. What are you studying? Communication studies. I'm actually writing a paper for a class. It's about you guys. Uh, it's, it's about queer sports. No, it's about queer spaces for older generations, because a lot of queer spaces nowadays are more geared towards younger people. So I wanted to observe and write an article about older queer spaces. Well, I don't know if we count. We, we weren't really formed as strictly a gay space. Betty, we're a softball team. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing gayer than that is a Bette Midler concert. <laughs> this is an older queer space. That takes organization, organization and maintenance. 
Which is um, something I'm trying to learn about, I guess. You guess. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous. But yeah, if I could get your names. You know Harry, of course. She plays third base. Fran here is our catcher. I'm second base. Betty's shortstop. Tip is first base, and Betty Ann is our pitcher, or wherever she is. No outfield? Uh, no need. None of our balls ever make it into the outfield. Speak for yourself, Georgina. I want you to put in your article that I have the highest batting average of the whole team. Got a homer in the last game. Uh, Fran, you got a homer because a third base girl got a hernia. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind if I asked you guys a few questions? Go on ahead. Okay. Um, why did you start uh, playing together? Like, made this team? I mean, let me start over. Why did you make this team? <laughs> Lynn, you want to take that one? Uh, I, I didn't make the team. You made the t-shirts. I made the t-shirts, but I didn't make the team. Georgina, most of us know each other because we dated each other. Yeah. <laughs> I dated Tiff. I dated Betty. Oh, shit. I dated Betty, too. <laughs> Tip on being a lesbo. You end up dating all your friends. And then your friends' friends. And then you've all slept together, and you can't go anywhere without somebody getting pissed off. <laughs> the team we're playing against today, the Poppies, we dated most of them, too. <laughs> yep, I've been through their entire infield. <laughs> we're just in old girls' clubs that like to throw around a ball every other weekend. Nothing too special. You have to understand why it's something, though. At least in terms of, like, seeing an older generation still get out and build a community. I want to explore the reasoning behind that. What that means. Yeah, well, for me, it means I don't have shit to do on a Saturday except come to a public park. <laughs> Betty Ann rushes in. <laughs> Betty, which pills was it, blue or pink? Neither white. God, just shoot me. Calm <laughs> down. <laughs> Let me help. The Bettys hurry off. Betty and Betty Ann? That's kind of cute. Oh, yeah. They're real cute. <laughs> Betty's cuter. Fran smacks at her. What? How long have they been a couple? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 did I say something wrong? No, just don't call them a couple. Never call them a couple. Not unless you want to be on the other side of Pompeii Part 2. Mm -hmm. Do they not like each other? No, they're crazy about each other. They used to be a couple, but they're not a couple anymore. <laughs> but they live together, right? For the past 25 years and <laughs> counting. They want to stay broken up. I'm confused. You should be writing this down. This is pure lesbian bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Georgina starts taking notes. It's not bullshit. They care about each other. It's mostly because Betty needs more help around the house these days. It's better that she lives with someone. Please. Betty didn't need help ten years ago when they lived together. They're screwing. Harry, be quiet. <laughs> now, you, you put that in your paper, Georgie. Old ladies screw, and we screw a lot. Don't put that in the paper. <laughs> it might be useful. <laughs> you have some questions to ask us. Isn't that right, Georgie? Yes, I got them all right here. But I was kind of wondering if you guys could offer me some different perspectives. What do you mean? Well, I'm going to be writing about, um, I guess, AIDS, the 80s, and that connection to the queer community now. Though I know that, I know that you guys can offer perspectives on like blood sister stuff. But other than that, if you have any other perspectives? Yeah, oh sure, we could offer a perspective. Betty was heavily involved in a lot of health groups, but mostly women's health groups. Don't talk to Betty. Why? She's busy, she's helping her with wither pills. How about you ask us some questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, yeah. Let's see, uh, first question. Have any of you known anyone who has died of AIDS? Silence. Hey, look who's here! Sounds of women shouting. Hey, the poppies get a bus. Linda, why don't we get a bus? You want a bus, you pay for a bus. <laughs> Harry, Chris is here too. Yoo-hoo! Christopher, over here, hot stuff. <laughs> Team 
Jim starts catcalling Chris with varying degrees of dirty talk. What? <laughs> yeah, he hates us. Hey, Chris, bring that sweetness near me so I can smack it. Woohoo! Chris the umpire enters, already looking tired. He's dressed in most of his umpire gear. All right, knock it off, I hear you. Hey, you going to be nice to us today, Chris, baby? Listen up, ball biddies. It's ball bitches, Chris. It's ball biddies, as long as I have to report it to Parks and Recreation. <laughs> now, I want a good, nice, clean game today. You hear me? You hear him, Harry? I hear him, and I see him. You want to see something real nice and clean, Chris? I just came from a Little League game, so I don't want any trouble, all right? Got a short fuse today. I'll ask you to sit out if you give me any trouble. Oh, I could give you plenty of trouble. <laughs> Where's Betty? Is she playing today? Right here, Ron. How are Mary and the boys? Doing wonderful. How about yourself? How are you feeling, Betty? The whole team looks to Betty, varying degrees of covertness. She ignores the attention. I'm all right. Today's a good day. Got my girls with me, gonna play a, a good game of ball. Play ball! Play ball! That's right. Glad to hear it, biddies. Let's start up. They all, he exits. They all start getting ready, loudly putting on gear. It's humbling to see a group of women who are older and who have weathered more than you have. A game of softball becomes more. Physical exertion becomes pushing past echoes of pain. Memories to not bring up. I am alone. And yet, I am among myself. I just, I just don't want to. I'm scared. A lot. I keep messing up, talking to them. I hope you guys are enjoying this. And I want you to stay tuned for pictures. I'm going to... Texting someone? Oh, uh, no. Working on the paper. Seeing your fingers fly across the screen, it's impressive. Don't think I got the chance to meet you. Georgina, I'm Linda's niece. I see. And are you family? Yes, I'm Linda's niece. No, honey, family. <laughs> you know, like on the team. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm gay. Thought so. I can pick out a baby dyke <laughs> out of a crowd. <laughs> Betty, come over here and, and meet Georgina. We've met. Georgina's a lovely name. I really like your names. Betty and Betty Ann. It's cute. She's writing a paper about us. That's great. Wonderful for my ego. Actually, <laughs> Betty. I have a lot of questions for you. Were you involved in any Blood Sisters work? Blood Sisters? Yes, with, um, with AIDS. That was mostly out of San Diego. I knew some folks. We did our part, like we always do. But to be honest, I have more to tell you about the 70s and what oh, was, was going on. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, it's fine. You're right. The woman's movement. But in terms of the gay movement, one in the same. I mean, yeah, but like in terms of more specific gay perspective. Uh-huh. What's your perspective on that? My perspective? On the gay movements you keep talking about. What's your perspective? I mean, uh, sorry, I don't understand. I see. Well, we have to get ready. But catch us later between the innings, okay? Um, yeah, sure. Georgina joins the rest of the team with her notes. Betty Ann leads Betty off to one side. Georgina watches them covertly. You're going to be all right? Yes, I'm fine. Uh, we can go back home if the sun is... I'm fine. It's not that... All right. Just didn't know the feminist movement had nothing to do with lesbians. Oh, haven't you heard? We only came about in the 80s. Oh, come on. She's young. It's a moment to teach, right? Sure, and I'm the best person to do it with a brilliant mind. I'm all right, Anne. I swear. Leave me be. Betty Ann leaves Betty alone. The team suits up and gets ready to play. All right, ladies, let's get out there. <laughs> the ball bitches take the field. Georgina is left alone. She watches the game, maybe cheering at a few points, sounds of a ball game going on, a few hits here and there. In the 1980s, when AIDS started rearing its horrific head, gay men were banned from donating blood. This resulted in a bullshit blood shortage, which was ironic given how much HIV patients needed blood. So, 
lesbians stepped up for their brothers. The San Diego Blood Sisters held blood drives and gave themselves to, gave themselves to, fuck. She deletes it, tries again, deletes. Nothing's working, she tries again. Betty looks old. They all look old. It makes me scared of getting older. Their ways of holding themselves are older too. Butch and femme. Terms that describe an old-fashioned code. Woman clinging to an antiquated monosexual binary. Still a binary now. Gendered. I feel close, I guess. But also cramped. Like I'm a big old box with the words baby dyke stamped on the front. Or as a tramp stamp. This is interesting, but not exactly what I wanted to be looking at. I don't see myself here. I see them. And I guess they're like me, but I don't see myself, if that makes sense. If anyone has had similar experiences, my ask box is gonna be- Hey, Ethan. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> Getting being scary. <laughs> you didn't. I was just into it, working, writing the paper. Uh, could you do me a big, big favor and scooch down a bit on my, my back? Uh, yeah, for sure. Oh, she moves down the bench. A little bit more, honey. I'm a big lady. <laughs> she moves more. She's almost off the bench. She flies down on the bench. <laughs> Is this okay? You, um, need anything? Oh, you are so sweet. Could you just... Uh, she lifts up a leg. Do you want me to, um... Hold the gun. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> she holds it. There you go. Yeah, of Thank course. You. Of course. Tiff groans in relief. Georgina is mortified. <laughs> Do you need it? Oh, you're good, Georgina. What's your name, right? Yes. I'm gonna give you some advice, Georgina. Don't ask about the dead people. Did I offend you? Nope. It takes an awful lot to bruise me these days, but we came here to play a game of ball, and those stories might not be something we want to talk about today. Especially Betty. It's not my intention to. I don't want to cause problems. I know that. No one's mad. Well, everyone's always a little mad. But that's <laughs> nice for you. You know how it is. Sorry. No, you don't like that word. I don't have a problem with the word die. And you flinch sharp enough to cat and rat it over the dugout when you say it, all right. But I won't return that with a lie and say the word. The word queer doesn't fuck me a little bit inside. Do you Sounds a bit like a fist. Do you want to talk about that? Nah. Queer. Dyke. Bad. All reclaimed. Rah, rah, rah. But some of us are going to have a certain reaction to some of us. Like you and Dyke. Any other words that are hard for you? Try this one. Arthur Le uh, Legia. Mm. Is that like a is that like a zine or a collective or something? What's it? <laughs> uh, means my joints are screwed up and I can't move my elbow without my popping something in my knee. <laughs> Got a few more words for you. Osteoarthritis, had a fellow femoral, bursitis, throw that in the alphabet soup. And while you're at it, look at my leg a little higher. <laughs> <laughs> it's a start. Sounds the game. Someone whoops and shouts on the floor. I think I might have um, upset Bay earlier. Well, that will happen. It's just, I want to. I want to get a well-rounded perspective of the gay community. And originally I was gonna like go to different places and go get those different perspectives, like gay bars, but that was just, you know, gay men. So I reached out to my aunt for help and she told me about this softball group. So I thought this might be good, but it's all, you know, still one perspective. I'm sorry, am I talking too much? I feel like I'm talking too much, but um, when Betty was asking me about my perspective was, she just sounded kind of mad. You know? So what is your perspective? That, like, I don't think the queer community should be considered in terms of the separate identities. When you're, like, looking at history, I don't want to limit myself with a lesbian perspective, you know? I want a well-rounded one. Well, no two lesbos are the same. Take me. You're looking at a genuine bar, Dyke. And that's... What's it sound like? A dyke in a bar. A dyke that goes to bar. <laughs> <laughs> that's <all. laughs> I don't. I'm 
I'm sorry. Why is that something? It's something because it's the dying breed. Like those gay bars you went to, gay men. Where are the dyke bars? I mean, Jolene's. Sure, sure. But why just Jolene's when there was Amelia's, Maud's, Peg's place, so many more, all closed. So yeah, it means something to me to call myself a bar dyke these days. But I wouldn't consider that history a limited perspective. If anything, Dyke's got the biggest perspective out there. I mean, I guess, sure. The rest of the team enters. Time to get ready for batting. I'm gonna give Chris a piece of my mind. Hell yeah. No, no, wait. We like Chris. Oh, I love Chris. Bring him over here. Chris, you know that call was full. I had her. Tip, are you traumatizing my niece? No. Yes. <laughs> Georgie, you can drop her leg. Don't let you guilt you into being her doula. My <laughs> <laughs> hips. Georgina drops the leg. And a bad back, and a bad nose, eczema, that thing on your ass. That's still there. <laughs> That's a mark, I heard. Harry? What? Help me get Chris back over here. How do you want me to do that? Flash him. No! Hey. Harry starts going for her shirt. <laughs> this is the only part with a clean bathroom. If you can ban from your Harry. My boys have never got anyone banned. They got me into plenty of places. Keep your guns in your holster. <laughs> Chris! <laughs> Fran storms after Chris. Everyone watches the ensuing argument, which happens off stage. Damn it, woman, let me do my job! I'll let you do your job when you do your damn job. She got her foot on the base before you got your glove on her chest, and it's as simple as that. Simple? Simple? 20 bucks on Fran. I'll take that. <laughs> Fran and Chris fight. Fran is throwing is thrown out of the game. Fran storms back to the dugout, tearing off her catcher's gear. <laughs> Harry gives her 20. Fran, you okay? I'm fine. I'm out of the game. I'm not playing catcher with a fascist umpire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Let me help you get out of there. The betting pool, big betting pool, is still going, right? Oh yeah. We're gonna make an easy hundred and a good fifty from you, chumps. Betty indicates Linda helping Fran out of her gear. I wouldn't be too sure. I double my bet. What's the bet? Don't worry about it. They're all being very mean about something that should be very nice. I just want something back for dealing with the drama. If this is about Fran, I saw my aunt put on cologne this morning. Oh, did she? Which cologne? CVS or Macy? Mm, the bottle looked nice. I can't smell anything. Harry, what do you smell? I smell my next trip to Italy being financed by all of you. <laughs> okay, I want in and put me down for 20. Batter up! Fran suddenly starts charging out of the dugout to beat Chris up. The rest of the team hold her back with shouts of protest. They sit her down on the bench. I'll convince him to let you out next inning, all right? Fine. Linda leaves to go to bat. The rest follow her to watch. Georgina sits next to Fran. I'm sorry you got kicked off. Oh, it's all right. Chris just did that because he knows I'm right. They watch the game. The catcher on the team is a woman named Fran, an old-fashioned lipstick lesbian. I wonder if the performance of femininity comes from a place of discomfort with it. As if finding a way to make peace with the term lesbian and all its connotations. They feel separate. Separate from the gay community. Separate from... How's your paper coming? Good. Are we making it difficult for you? No. I mean, it's kind of hard to talk to her. Is that what you call a strike? That wasn't high enough to graze your balls. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. No, no, I'm sorry. Here, I'll, I'll help you out. I got nothing better to do, anyways. What are some of your questions? Uh, it doesn't seem like I should be asking some of them. Well, that's part of it, isn't it? Not getting the answer you want, refusal to answer is an answer in itself. So, I should take someone's refusal to answer as something as, like, what? Because this is getting frustrating. Well, you gotta know that in a lot of ways, this isn't something we can easily in what answer. Ways? More personal ways. For me, at least, learning how to claim myself, learning how to look at others and claim them. I see you. I'm like you. I see. How was that hit a foul? Outside the lines! <laughs> they watch the game for a moment in silence. How do you? Claim something for yourself. See it in yourself. 
I knew I was a lesbo when I got my first period. Oh. I got one, and my mother was so pleased with me, like I'd accomplished something by sitting and bleeding. She said it was my introduction to womanhood, and that repulsed me. I was told the moment was a moment I should remember, so I tried to make it a memory of something else. I shaved my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, catch it, catch it, get damn it! You shaved your head, so you weren't always a fan. Femininity was something I had to take back for myself. Shaving my head and making my mother say I looked like a lesbian was more of something about being seen in me. Someone hits a homer. I don't want anyone seeing anything in me that I haven't already seen. I don't want anyone calling me anything that I don't already know about myself. Maybe you should see it as someone, as someone seeing something but passing something along. And you don't think that's like a bit deterministic? How do you mean? Well, I mean like labels, like lesbian. It feels like, I don't know, like old. Like I don't, don't, do you use the term lesbian as a label to describe yourself? Well, that right there is a bit of an issue, right? What is? Labels, labeling, it's a lot. I gotta admit, I'm not like the hugest fan of it. I guess when I wanna say I'm gay, I have to say I'm lesbian. Like, give a label to myself. You don't have to do anything. I don't know, but I do. Because if I don't, others do. Because that, like, people are going to call me things regardless of that. And I like, I get the use of labels. I get it. In terms of making distinctions between experiences, I really get that. But like, the word, it doesn't really, I don't know. When I was 17, a friend of mine, I liked her. I didn't know, but I guess she figured it out because she told everyone. And she saw something in me like I didn't see yet. And then everyone did. And it was like I didn't have a choice. After that, even when I came out, it's like no one was surprised. And being called lesbian, it just didn't. The first girl I had a crush on, the other girls in my high school called her dirty. Dirty and lesbian, like they were the same word. Yeah. And I hated her at first because then I knew that I could be watched too. Found out. So I closed in on myself, found a corner in the girls' locker room, didn't look at anyone, became hyper vigilant about not touching anyone. And you know how I got over it? Shaving your head? No, oh, no. Softball. Joined a team for phys ed credits, and they put me in as catcher, and then I was forced to touch other girls. And it wasn't dirty. It wasn't wrong. We were a team. We were together. And I, I found a way to feel joy within that. She was on the team, too, the lesbian, and touching her, her hand brushing up against her in the dugout. It became something wondrous to me. The word lesbian became something wondrous to me. You know, when Linda told me that you were coming, I, I dug out a stack of photos I took when we were younger, less creaky in the joints. I thought you might like to see some of those pictures. Oh, okay. Could I take some pictures? Yes, actually. I have a lot of And I have a lot of Betty's old writing, too. I would love to see the pictures. Good, because I'm getting sick of watching us lose. <laughs> they need to go to Fran's car. Sounds of a ball game, a length of time passes. The team returns from the field. Well, I think I passed gas all the way around the bases. <laughs> we see a scene of the team all talking at the same time. Eventually, it's discovered that Linda is wearing cologne for Fran. I just like cologne. What's wrong with cologne? <laughs> Betty Ann, you like cologne. Yeah, and the girls I was interested in it and sure liked it too. Come on, Lynn. You're running a bit obvious here. Just ask around. She'll say yes. Did she tell you that? Not those exact words, but I know she likes you. Can we focus on playing a game? No, we got our own side game going on here. You gotta ask Fran out, 
Take her to dinner. My sister can get you a discount at her restaurant. Hey, does your sister still do Pilates in those little pants? Harry, if you so much as call her, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Betty Ann digs around in her bag for icy hot packs. How long have you been mooning after Fran, anyway? I thought it started between Jerry and Rosie. No, no, it was before that. Who's Jerry? Fran's girl, before Rosie. That was Joe. I can never get coach names right. <laughs> I'm going to go see if I can bribe Chris with a beer. Anyone want in? I'll go. I want Fran back in. Yeah, well, I want to see if he'll throw me out, too. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> Tiff, Betty, and Harry leave the dugout. Betty Ann hands Linda a beer. How's Betty doing? Good. Really good. The doctor's proud of her. We do a lot of puzzles. Of course, it's worse in the evening. Sundowning. The sun sets and things start getting a bit fuzzy. She once told me it was like being underwater. Scary. Went out the next day and bought an inner tube. She thought that was funny. <laughs> I heard music helps. Hmm. She's more of a movie person. Her mom would on movies. The same mom who thought you'd turn her? <laughs> I remember thinking if if my ugly ass could turn her, then she was a dyke long before I came around. <laughs> <laughs> but she misses her, I get it. You know, you get older, you want something familiar, but old hurts start getting a little faded. Her mom had Alzheimer's too, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, was a bitch right till the end, though. I was really hoping she'd forget about that, forget that. She did forget that he was, was gay. But you know something? She still hated me. Consistent. You as well. You are not going to ask Fran on a date. Can you leave it alone? I'm going to ask her my own time, my own way. Is it happening today? <laughs> Harry doesn't boil me over. Be nice to Harry. It's hard for her feelings and stuff. Well, then why is she pushing me to ask Fran out, huh? If she has feelings for me. Mm -hmm. You know? She's my best friend, Anne. Of course I know. Let her down easy. Not a jerk. I know. Fran and Georgia. I'm just saying. Harry's more fragile than she looks. I guess. But I don't want to, I don't know, scare her. You and Harry, huh? Can't say I'm uh, surprised. Linda jumps and falls back on the bench. God. You okay? I'm so sorry. I gotta stop sneaking up on you like that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do anything. What's that? Fran has a photo album of all of you. And there's actually a lot of great things in there. Oh, yes, I haven't seen them in forever. Linda, there's some fun pictures of Harry and you in here, too, if you want to start a conversation with her. Conversation? What conversation? I think you'd make a cute couple, butch for butch. Do you want to date Harry? But I thought Georgina, we need a new catcher. <laughs> what? what? Friend, would you mind? No, go ahead. She can use my gear. Make sure it's tightened properly. Uh, no, that's all right. I don't think I'll be good. Oh, come on. We'll spice up your article. Linda, she's a talking major. She doesn't do sports. <laughs> <laughs> Communication studies? And, yeah, I don't do sports. <laughs> the rest of the team returns to the dugout. Yay, Georgie's going to play all right! Woo! We need to catch her and touching, right? Mm -hmm. Working at finding peace with her? I don't think. I got an extra glove in here somewhere. You gonna play with us, Han? I guess I could try an inning. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They help her get suited up. The batter hits the ball and then it hits you. Make sure you catch it. Then can count it as an out. It's going to hit me? It's not gonna hit you, <laughs> but if it does hit you. And if I start throwing a little off center, just, just let me know. If the ball hits you, the bruise won't show up right away. So try to make it a place where your mom can't see it. And duck if anyone throws a bat. Arthritis and gripping handles don't mix. <laughs> <laughs> you look amazing! Come on, bitches, Woo! let's go! Woo! 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 Fran, if you want to come out, I think I can talk Chris and let me watch your Gina. Oh, it's all right. I'm going to look for a few more things in the car. I think there's some writings I want to find. Come on, Evans up! They charge the field. Fran leaves for the car. Tiff re-enters the dugout looking for something. A notification from Georgina's phone goes off. She glances over, then spies something she can't draw her attention away from. She picks up the phone and starts reading. Betty enters the dugout. 
Harry keeps whining about her wrist. You got the brace? Tiff? Tiff? Huh? What you got there? Hmm. Nothing. All right, because it looked like you were looking at breasts. I was not. Mm -hmm. Is that your phone? It is not. So you were looking at breasts on someone else's phone. <laughs> <laughs> Have you found Harry's brace? Whose phone is that? Um, Georgina's paper, but it's, it's not. It looks, looks like a website. I think you're sitting near the brace. Can you? She's writing on a website about us. What? Yeah, she has this hole. There's lots of pictures and a lot of porno stuff. What? There's a whole archive here of pictures of the, huh. Their ways of holding themselves are older, too. Butch and femme, terms that prescribe an old-fashioned code. Women cling to an antiquated monosexual binary. What's that? I don't know, but she was working on it. Betty takes it. I wonder if the performance of femininity comes from a place of discomfort with it, as if finding a way to make peace with the term lesbian and all its connotations. God! Calm down, she's young. Betty reads on. You okay? I'm fine. I just, that hurt. More than I think it should. And you know, you think, you think they're going to be respectful. But they'll look up to you and respect you for what you've been through and who you are because that's who they are. But then they, they just turn in a, oh, I need a bonus. Don't read that. It's her, it's her porn collection, whatever it is. You shouldn't look at that. I mean, it's a pretty good porn collection. <laughs> Monosexual binary. I haven't heard that one in years. I think it's important to remember she's young. If I don't see shortstop and first base on the field now, I'm calling it a forfeit. Don't uh -huh. get upset. Let's get on the field. God, save me from dykes. Betty puts down the phone and goes back to the field. Tiff grabs Harry's brace. She leaves the dugout and goes out on the field. <coughs> Sounds of a ball game, an afternoon passing. The team returns to the dugout. We see a scene that reveals Georgina wasn't the best catcher, and she nearly got run over by a batter. She struggles to take off the gear with the team's help. <laughs> Betty, can I ask you a couple of questions? I wanted to ask them earlier. I'm tired right now. Tired? <laughs> From what? I had to die for everything that came your way. You just didn't want me to play. None of you do. Oh, Betty, I was joking. Come on, Betty. No one's saying that. Can all of you focus on your own game for once and leave me alone? Betty Ann moves toward her. Hun. Don't hide me. I'm not your mother. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> Betty sits on the bench, far from Georgina. Fran wanders back in, holding some photos and paper. I smell perfume. Friend back. <laughs> Sorry you didn't miss out on the game, friend. Huh? Oh, that's, that's fine. I don't mind. You okay? Yeah, I was just... Um, found some more things in the car. I was looking through my little collection of pictures here. Didn't remember how far back this went. Look at this one. Tiff silently grabs everyone's attention as Linda moves to look at the album with Fran. She quickly starts hustling everyone out of the dugout so Linda and Fran can be alone. Harry doesn't want to leave. Hey, I forgot about that jacket. God, I thought it looked like James Dean. See the pop collar there? I know. And the little lipstick stain on your neck. You know I would do that myself. <laughs> Ow. Put on lipstick. Kiss the back of your hand and press it like a stamp. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it looked hot, but it, this looked like my grandmother gave me a kiss after church. <laughs> <laughs> Linda notices the team leaving and sees that Harry doesn't want to leave. She waits and gestures that Harry should go. The team and a reluctant Harry leave her with Fran. No, I think it's cute. Look at the thick glasses on Tiff. Remember when she would wear those long skirts? Oh, yeah. I've always been jealous she could pull that off. You can't pull off a skirt? I mean, I pulled off many a skirt in my time as a young girl. <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> they look at some more pictures. Your mascara is working, just like you said. Good. Was Georgina okay? I think she's a little nervous. I get the feeling she's trying to play catch up. She's certainly young. You remember what that's like. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, you ever think about getting out there again? I'm not 
not sure. <laughs> I miss it, I guess. But then I don't. I, I don't like the dating part. I just want the relationship part. That's how I even ended up with Rosie. I wanted something easy. I, I wanted all that connection and history and relaxing couple calm without all the bullshit. So maybe not. Companionship isn't a one-stop shop. Uh-huh. But, uh... But? If it was somebody you knew? Long pause. They look at each other. On the precipice of something. Harry returns. Fran sees her. I think you're luckier in that department than I am. Hey, Harry. You two coming to the pub? That was the plan. All right. Was I interrupting something? No, she's all yours. I'll leave you two to it. Fran, wait. I don't think... Do you need a ride? I'm good. See you, lovebirds at Bibbers. She leaves. <laughs> Harry whistles, miming a batter swing. Swing and miss. Hey, better, better, better. Swing, swing it on home and miss it all the way there. What do you want? My hundred dollars since you wussed out for the last time tonight. Hardy har. You know she thinks I want to be with you? Well, you're going to fix that now. I was until you barged in. Please, you've got to stop with these excuses, Lynn. Georgina enters. Tiff wants to know if you guys are leaving. Also, if Fran is riding with you. No, Fran's riding on her own. No one's riding anyone else. Please <laughs> shut up. But there's still time at the pub. We can give you two some alone time. Get filled to play some romantic music. Is everything OK? Grace Lynn, by the time you work up the courage, she's going to have been married and divorced again. That's not funny, Harry. No, it's not. It's tragic. It's pathetic. Georgina, help me talk some sense into your aunt. Georgie, do, do me a favor and go get the stuff in the car. Yep. Georgina hurries off with the baseball gear. Linda waits until she's out of earshot. If you want to give me shit, fine. Give it. But don't do it in front of my family. Oh, come on. What's stopping you from asking Fran out? Oh, mostly you. Please. No, it's you. You nag me, you pressure me, you get in my way. I'm my own person, Harry. You can't make me do anything. I I'm not. I don't want to hear it for the rest of the night, okay? Then you've lost the bet. The bet was a joke. Are you serious? Do you seriously want me to fork over money? Because if you need money, you can have it. Lynn, it's a joke. But it doesn't feel like it. It feels more like you keep pushing me to do this. If you don't want to ask her out, you don't have to ask her out. Fuck me. No, listen. If I want to start a relationship with Fran, I make it my own time and pace. This isn't meaningless to me. I've been single for a decade. The thought of ending that, even if it's if I want, it's horribly daunting. I don't know if you remember, but I'm not you. This stuff actually means something to me. Oh, and what does that have to do with you not being me? Okay. All right, let's calm down. No, sure. No, you know I expected that you to call me a whore. I didn't call you anything. Oh, no, you never do. You all call yourself stuff, though. Harry. Gold star lesbians, right? I didn't say that. OK. All right. But I know how you look at me, and you won't even let me use the word bisexual half the damn time. You don't even use that. Because I see how you look when I do. So it's a joke, right? Harry the husband stealer? Harry the whore? Because otherwise, it would make you uncomfortable. Yeah, I am too old to be having this conversation. And I'm too old to have to tell you who I am for the thousandth time, but here we are. Harry, look, we can talk about it. If you had told me before about your feelings for me, we could have talked about it. What? Harry, come on, I'm not stupid. Oh, you sure act like it. Get all yourself, Lynn. Not everyone wants to fuck you, least of all friend. Harry. You owe me a hundred. She storms off, bumping into Betty, who's approaching the dugout, nearly knocking her over. Hey! Linda and Harry rush to help Betty. They carefully lead her to the bench. Are you okay, Betty? I'm so sorry. I'm fine. Gonna take more of your skinny butt to knock me down. Did you scrape anything? Oh, stop. I'm okay. She waves them off, but struggles to catch her breath. Harry and Linda watch, uncertain. I, I'm gonna go get Betty Ann. Yeah, do that. A moment between Harry and Linda. Harry storms off. Are you sure you're all right? Oh, yes. I just wanted to be looking at the field as the sun set. Didn't know I was walking through a lover's spat. Ah, bad joke. You going to be all right sitting here? Right as rain. Go on ahead. Linda leaves. Betty takes in the field. 
the sounds of the park around her, of evening approaching, cars driving away. The noise slowly turns into something else, something otherworldly and terrifying, perhaps as if dunked underwater. Betty's world for this moment consists of just her. In another world, in the dugout, Betty Ann enter enters. She speaks, but Betty can't hear her just yet. When she can, it's sudden and all noise returns. Messed up about something. I'm sure it was Fran. Still can't spoil a lovely evening. Mm -hmm. huh? You all right? No. Okay, you, you want to go home? No, let's join the others. I can watch you all get drunk. Right. Ready to go? Not just yet. You seemed pretty upset earlier, after you got Harry's brace. Did I? Don't recall that. Come on, you can't pick and choose when you have dementia. Who says I can't? Everyone else seems to be doing a fine enough job of choosing what to forget. Forget what? It's just interesting how we did so much for our so-called gay community, only to see how they remember it now. Is this about Georgina? I don't feel she respects us. I feel like she... I don't know. I'm just frustrated. Everyone all day telling me what I should or shouldn't do, and the biggest thing, people refuse to let me be at all, and every turn is an angry dyke, as if my anger is going to relax with age. I just think she's just... Being young is no excuse, because who else is going to write down our history? What are they going to say about us? Who is going to remember when when we don't remember. Well, I'm here, and I remember. Betty Ann helps her up, and they stand together for a moment, holding each other. It's companionable more than anything else, but no less meaningful. After a bit, a car horn honks from the parking lot. I'll wait for you by the car, all right? Okay. Whenever you're ready. She leaves. A moment of silence. Georgina barges in. Hi, Betty. I was wondering. Fran showed me pictures of an AIDS event you went to. Could you walk me through the process? Because I want to compare it to this theory that I have. No, no. I just wanted to ask you some questions. Older queer spaces. What What does that even mean? It, uh, it means spaces for older queer people. You know, I come from a time and a place where the word queer was the last thing you heard before you got kicked in the teeth. Queer and dyke. And if you want the answer behind why we have these old gay spaces and clubs and get-togethers, it's that right there. And I don't think your own generation understands that. Okay. I think you'll start to get it if you get that part right. I think I'm getting that part right. You're not. Okay. I don't think you actually want me to talk about that part. Right, you want to lecture me. You think I'm going to lecture you? Which is lovely, because I'll be hearing it from a lesbian who can't say the word lesbian. <laughs> or a woman clinging to an antiquated monosexual binary. What? That's a nice paper you're writing. It has a lot of pictures of tits. Did you look through my phone? <laughs> Are you serious? You can't re romanticize the past and then scold us for living it. Hey, first of all, that was, okay, the tits. I can explain that. It's on my feed, on my blog, but not my blog. I have this friend who I follow on Tumblr who, during the day, she posts some really funny posts. But then as soon as the sun goes down, it's all like tits. <laughs> so, I, I swear it's not mine. And you know, she's my friend, so I can't really unfollow her. We're mutual, so it's like, okay, the point is, the tits aren't mine. They aren't my tits. <laughs> Betty stares at her. And I'm not romanticizing the past. I'm trying to respect it. Just look like a lot of porn next to a pretentious pondering about why you're not a dyke. You know what? You don't have to like me. I don't have to do Jack. But I think you're right. There's a reason behind the clubs and the teams and everything. But be honest, you don't want to talk about it. You want to forget it, and that's fine. It's hard, I get that, but I really don't feel like only remembering the good stuff. Easy stuff. I wish I could do that. 
I wish I could choose to forget whatever I want because it looks good on my website and makes me look good in front of my friends. I'm not. But I'm lucky for me. I have a perfect memory. Lucky for your blog. I have these grand memories of these wonderful things you want to hear about. I can tell you every nasty thing men have called me. I can tell you everything my mother ever said to me. How dirty she thought I was. Everything so-called feminists said back in the day, but you don't want to hear about that. I want to hear about the gay movement. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to narrow down my lens here. It's the same thing. Feminist movement, gay movement, you can't separate the two. Even though they tried, even though they're still trying. I'm not. Oh my god. Fine. I'll leave you alone. Better you have to leave us all alone. Have your aunt take you home. You're an exhausting person. Ouch. And you're just, you're cruel. My aunt told me that you were the nicest of the entire team. And that you knew a lot of stuff about what I wanted to learn. So I was excited to meet you. But you've been nothing but awful to everyone all day. All the nice queers are dead. No, <laughs> all the nice queers are over there having fun. And you're just here being a bitch. Pause. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Queer and bitch. Always manages to find its way back to that. I got angry. That wasn't right. Nope. I'm sorry. I don't really care what you are. Sorry, queer, die, not a die. Just leave me alone. Leave me out of it. God damn it! You gotta jiggle the key. I'm jiggling the fucking key, Chris. I'm jiggling it hard enough to break my damn wrist. Here, let me try. Get, get out of my car. I just need to... The car engine turning, sputtering, and finally coming to life. There we go. See? I got it. I think I should go. Yeah, you do that. Harry, wait, hold on a second. Hey, stop! Watch where you're... Crunch of a car backing into another car. Harry, what the hell? Get out of the car, you blind bat. It's fine. I got it. What is happening? Uh, I think Harry just backed into my aunt's car. Another crunch. And another one. Another car. Christ on a cake, enough of this. I'm leaving. Chris enters. All right, biddies. Looks like no one's leaving. The rest of the team comes back. We see a scene in which Harry insists that she will call a tow truck and storms off. Tiff decides that since she can't get drunk at a bar, she will get drunk at the park and starts <laughs> handing out beers. <laughs> Betty ignores Georgina. Georgina starts to ask the others more questions about revolutionary periods in their lives and some of the team expresses that the past didn't feel that revolutionary while they were living it. What's important to know is for some of us, well, I was in my 20s and I cared. We were dykes and that meant something to be a lesbian and fuck you, I'm a dyke. But I was also an idiot. I went to collective meetings when they had beer and pizza. My friend Rob used to go to AIDS funerals as a way to cruise. Mm. Everyone looks to Betty. She avoids everyone's gaze. We see a scene of ball biddies sharing some experiences from back in the day. Funeral parties, thrown to raise money for AIDS funerals. Some share, some share stories about experience, experiencing hate from gay men. Some dispute this, namely Linda and Fran, who share a story from the White Knight Riots. They were throwing things at the cops. And to be honest, they weren't doing that well. And suddenly these gay guys come over and ask if we were lesbians. Asking me that was like asking a Dalmatian that had spots on its ass. <laughs> I was wearing nothing but Canadian tuxedos back then. <laughs> <laughs> so we said yes, and then they said great, and handed us a bunch of things to throw, because they figured if we were lesbians, we played softball. <laughs> so we were better at throwing, and part of me wanted to get you know, all self-righteous, just like, just because we're lesbians doesn't mean we play softball. And then I look over at Linda, and she's already throwing things. Hit three cops square in the head. <laughs> so then I start throwing, and all the other gay women around us start throwing. And wouldn't you know it, a lot of lesbians actually play softball. <laughs> we became a firing squad with gay men running over to help reload. <laughs> oh, and then after that, you'd walk down the street, and gay men would nod at you and say, hey, sister. Because we were there, and they saw we were there. 
yeah, but it still didn't stop them from forgetting about us anyways. You know, it's funny how we disappear when it's time to make movies and books. Betty nods in agreement. That's why we became our own collectors of information. We needed to remember all of that because we knew no one else would. Because we knew if we didn't, someone else would come along down the line and start asking all the wrong questions. All right, well, one of you talk about whatever's going on because I feel like you're both about to lunch for each other's throats or something. We see a scene where it's revealed to the rest of the team that Georgina is not writing an essay, but instead live blogging to her friends about the day's events. More than that, it's revealed that Georgina has dropped out of school. Accusations are thrown, and Linda is hurt that Georgina didn't tell her the truth. Georgina tries to explain. I'm not real. I'm not like... I don't have any experiences. I don't even have a lot of gay friends that I know in real life who aren't online. So I've been trying to connect more with the community and I wanted to prove that I could. Everyone talking at once. The commotion upsets Betty who nearly has a panic attack. Linda storms out of the dugout. Fran and Tiff follow, leaving the Bettys, Harry and Georgina. Harry reveals to Georgina that she was also a college dropout and shares some of her perspective. You know, for a bunch of biddies who claim this is just a ball game, they sure do seem to get worked up over who says what and what's not allowed. Not like that's changed. But they can rose color all they want. Because you know, Tom and Jane down the lane will see you holding hands with a girl and treat you like a heathen. So a lot of us thought, or at least I did, well, if you're gonna call me disgusting, for holding my girl's hand, then I want to make it very clear how disgusting I can be. And then they would push. And you would push back. And then they would take out a gun. The cops would come to the bars, and it was a game to them to try to get us to act out. They'd wait for you. Wait for you to start walking home after having a few drinks. And then they'd slam you against a wall claiming you were being drunk and disorderly and stick a hand down your pants. A friend of mine, when she fought back, she got put on a sex offender registry. She's still on that now. So, I think, I think there has to be something beautiful in the word freak, queer, dyke, you just got to find the beautiful in it before the rest finds you. You'd be surprised who would find, try to find the disgusting. When Betty Friedan started her bullshit, saying the presence of lesbians in the women's movement would destroy feminism, I suddenly found that it was other women, women I thought I could trust, who were telling me to shut up. I know that there was, that lesbians moved away from the general feminist movement. Is it really moving when you're not wanted there in the first place? You know, I spend most of my time at women's shelters, women health group places trying to help women, and they were always afraid I was going to ruin things. All at this shelter, I was reading Ruby Fruit Jungle at the front desk, and they told me to put it away. Because if a woman came in and saw that a lesbian was at the front desk, she wouldn't come in. I still remember that, despite everything. I remember what that felt like. And then with AIDS, I stepped up. All of us lesbians stepped up. We helped. But then after it felt, they forgot. They're forgetting everything. Well, I know you haven't forgotten how much sex you had back in the day. You idiots. Well, come on, everyone wanted a piece. Including you. Yeah. Dementia hasn't relieved me of memories of our escapades. Georgina starts crying. Harry, Betty, and Betty Ann all panic. They have a silent conversation with each other, trying to make someone go over and comfort Georgina. No one's stepping up. Finally, Betty and Harry bully Betty Ann into doing it. There's, there's, no need to, there's no need to cry. Do you think my aunt's mad at me? I think your aunt gets high hopes for how things are going to go and then struggles with follow through, like winding up the swing of bat and throwing your back out instead. 
She'll come around. We all do. Pause. Georgina's still crying. But hey, you got involved in your first dyke drama. It's a rite of passage, right, Betty? <laughs> a moment. Betty deciding whether or not to respond. I suppose it is. I think it's kind of neat in your block. Yeah? Sure, it's, it's nice that people want to hear about a bunch of old ladies playing softball. It's mostly a lot of gay people in their 20s. Really? What do they think? Of this? You've been posting, right? Yeah. Has anyone posted back? I could check if that's all right. Harry shrugs. Betty doesn't react. Okay, uh, oh. Georgina reads something and laughs. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, just something a friend of mine commented. Um, I had uh, mentioned the bet with Fran and my aunt asking out Fran, you know? Oh, yeah? And my friend said, it's nice to know that when I'm 70, I'll be awful at falling in love. <laughs> <laughs> and my other friend replied to that. He said, they told me it gets better. They lied. <laughs> they all sound as stupid as me. <laughs> <laughs> Betty Ann laughs long and hearty. Georgina, encouraged, reads on. As she reads, the rest of the team slowly trickles their way back into the dugout and listens. We see a scene where Georgina scrolls through her blog with the ball biddies. Perhaps we see a few posts, gay art, jokes, memes, discourse, cards with people's pronouns, Profile pictures, a bunch of queer kids reaching out to each other. Eventually, Fran steps up, holding a little zine. I think this could be something for the blog. It's about passing it down, something that Betty wrote back in the day. Georgina, Georgina takes the zine. It's a zine called Gay Panic, Dyke Fright Edition. It was a Halloween theme zine based around <laughs> making fun of straight people being uh, afraid of queer people. There's mostly comics and a few anti-assimilationist essays, but you had an interesting essay entry about a, a gay girl recognizing an older lesbian in the bathroom. Georgina shows Betty the zine and after a moment starts reading the piece. A young girl in a restroom, washing her hands at the sink. A dyke, a true hundred-footer bulldog dyke, <laughs> approaches the sink and begins to wash her hands. The girl stares, not in fear, but in awe. The dyke is magnificent. The girl stares so hard she breaks the handle of a sink. <laughs> the dyke smiles knowingly at the girl and takes out a replacement sink handle as she's been carrying it in her pocket. <laughs> <laughs> she replaces the sink handle and leaves the bathroom. The girl watches her go and then slips to the broken handle in her pocket. One day, she plans on replacing it for another girl. Mm. And it's got this lovely comic that someone drew. Robbed from that. Pause. Everyone with bated breath, unsure how she will react. He used to draw all the time. I loved his work. When he got sick, I made sure the nurses let him have a little easel he could prop up in his bed. He drew that one for me. There in the hospital, told him I needed a lesbian holding a sink faucet, and he laughed and said, of course, what else? <laughs> they didn't let me have his easel after he died. Silence. Betty Ann puts a hand on Betty's shoulder. I still have most of his drawings somewhere. We'll find them. She kisses her on the cheek. Linda pulls Harry to the side. Your friend with the truck is here. Oh, good. They stand together, a pause. You or me first this time. I'll go first. I'm sorry. Yeah. Shouldn't have made you feel that way. Personally, I love that you screwed Matt. Leaves more women for me. <laughs> <laughs> Something is still broken, but time will fix it. You need to be easy on Georgie. I know. And ask Fran out. I mean it. You'd be good for each other. I know. I'm sorry, you know, for all the... Yeah, yeah, I love you. I know you love me. And at the end of the day, that's all that there is. Yes. I mean, think about how it'll end. Think about what you want to hope to remember. They both look at Betty. 
She's scrolling through the blog, Georgina helping her. Yeah, I love you. Harry wipes away a tear quickly, hiding it from Linda. Harry leaves with the car. We see a scene where Linda and Georgina express that there's a lot they don't know about each other, but they want to start trying. When Fran approaches Georgina, she lets her aunt have a moment alone. So, you wanted to tell me something? Yeah, yes, I do. <laughs> are you and Harry all right? We are. We came to, uh, we know each other uh, real well. We're real good friends, and we, um, we want to keep that friendship. Ah, I see. Because I think, uh, <clears throat> I think one of my friends could be more than that, if she wanted. If she wanted. Hmm. And what do you want? I want her to know that I should have said something ages ago, before Rosie and Joe and, and whoever else, but, you know, don't want to risk losing the team's catcher. Fran breaks out a huge grin. She pulls Linda close. Betty Ann gets the other's attention, and they all watch as Fran presses a kiss to Linda's cheek, leaving behind a perfect lipstick stain. <laughs> Another old blotting trick. I'm told it looks hot. Linda's at a loss for words. I'm sorry, was that not? In a quick movement, Linda wraps Fran up in her arms and kisses her. Cheers from the dugout. <laughs> kiss goes on, and then goes on a bit too long. <laughs> Coughs from the dugout. <laughs> when they finally pull away, Fran's lipstick is ruined, but she couldn't be happier. Mm -hmm. We see a scene where Fran and Linda happily leave the dugout to put their gear away in the car, or perhaps do other things in the car. <laughs> Tiff and Betty Ann notice that Betty is still scrolling through the blog and decide to let her have a moment alone with Georgina. Everything here reminds me of something, recalling something. That's something I thought I'd lost. Not yet, at least. Nice to know it means something to people. Disconcerting that it doesn't entirely fit up here anymore. She taps her head. Air perfect memory? It's still perfect. Just angry. Only way to think about it. Pissed off. Won't talk to me that much anymore. I always thought I knew what I would forget. But you don't. It surprises you. And then it doesn't because it's no longer there. I thought I'd remember the marches, the writings, all of this. All of this big stuff, but it's the small stuff. The softballs, the hangovers, the kisses. All the small stuff that made what the big stuff was for. How do you get to the small stuff? You don't. It just happens to you. They sit together for the first time, a level of comfort in their closeness. Then Betty gets up and stretches. She grabs a bit of her gear and starts and stares at her glove. She hands it to Georgina. Here. So you'll have your own for next time. Georgina takes the glove and watches as Betty Ann leaves the dugout. Georgina looks out on the field. She holds up the glove and takes a picture of it. Mm -hmm. And play. Mm -hmm.